it's working. So today, um, Yonel, Armandine and myself were supposed to show you a performance uh, with a Minitel. Uh, unfortunately, with the COVID situation and uh, now that we are online, it is not possible for us to do this performance online and you will uh, understand why in a couple of minutes. So I have tried to do my best to show you our artistic uh, artwork with a slideshow and I hope you enjoy it. So today I'm representing the PAMA group. Uh, like uh, Osman said, uh, it is an acronym for Preservation in Art Media Archaeological Lab. So we are a European artistic group uh, based in France, Germany and Austria. We are composed right now of five persons. So Stéphane Bizet, engineer, Lionel Brois, artist and media archaeologist, Armandine Schall, media artist, Emmanuel Guez, media forest and archaeologist, and myself, media and digital art conservator restaurant. So together, we are developing an artistic approach based on a media archaeological practice of conservation and restoration of digital and media artworks. Um, our work really seeks to show and to point out uh, dis uh, technological discontinuities and dying ecosystems. So we are reconstructing artworks that, are, uh, that have disappeared or are um, really damaged by obsolescence. We are uh, more specialized in networks, uh, artwork preservation too. So I'll start by presenting you our research on the reconstruction of artworks made with the Minitel, then how we recreated the network itself. First, this, first things uh, first, um, what is the Minitel? So you might not be familiar with this object and its related network, and it is totally normal because the Minitel is a French invention. Uh, we could describe it as the biggest uh, fail of network history. Um, I'm going to show you just a small video of um, how you could use the mini cell back then. Dis, Baba, quand est-ce que tu vas chercher ta voiture? Regarde, je fais le 11, je tape le nom du garage, et, et après je suis la petite flèche. Quand est-ce que tu vas chercher ta voiture? Eh bien, je suis la petite flèche, elle me dit tout. Voilà, c'est indiqué, je peux y aller ce soir. Et comment j'y vais ben C'est simple, j'ai plus qu'à suivre le chemin, là. Pour plus d'informations, la flèche du 11. Annuaire de France Télécom, vous renseignez par tous les moyens. So you can see it. So the, this French invention is the acronym of Medium Interactive par Numérisation d'Informations Téléphoniques, which means interactive medium by digitization of telephonic information. So it designates a passive computer terminal, like you can see on, on the slide. So basically, it's, the Minitel is just a plastic shell with a keyboard and a nine inch screen without any storage possibilities. It is connected, though, to the French service Videotex Teletel, operated between 1980 and 2012. The services are accessible from a telephone line thanks to a built-in modem, which uh, provides 1,200 bits per second in reception and 75 bits in, uh, per second in transmission. The Minitel was equipped with a T-socket for connection to the French telecom network, um, telephone network. The Minitel screen is a text matrix with a size of 25 lines and 40 columns, video text mode. It means um, eight shades of gray for the black and white screen and eight different colors for the color screens. It is based on its own coding system. So it is a set of graphic uh, characters, each one made up of six bytes, which enables to display images in kind of a mosaic mode, uh, a little bit like ASCII. The user had to call the four-digit short number of the chosen service with its phone, wait for the dial tone, and then press connection enter to access the page. The concept of the Minitel has been, always, has been also marketed in other countries under different names, <clears throat> such as uh, Videotexto in Brazil, Alextel in Quebec, and Bildschirmtext in Germany. 
for example of use of the Minitel, uh, there's the telephone book. Um, you could also uh, book uh, train tickets, uh, look up bank accounts, uh, read the newspaper, um, or just chat with women uh, on the famous uh, service of the pink Minitel. Let's say it straight away, so there's no misunderstanding. Uh, the Minitel is not the ancestor of the internet. They evolved in parallel between 90s, the, the 80s and the 90s. So the, it was really two systems evolving at the same time. So it, it didn't appear before internet. They really arrived like slowly together. And of course, as any technical medium, artists have been interested in the Minitel. And famous artists such as uh, Daniel Buren or Orlan, um, Eduardo Cax, John Cage, um, Vera Molna uh, worked and made artworks for the Minitel. So here you can see in a piece by Daniel Buren for the Minitel. These artworks were published in the Minitel magazine Art Access, founded in 1986, and directed by Orlan and Frédéric Devlet. Here is, for example, a Madonna by Orlan. For us, the project started in 2012, after France Telecom stopped the services because of a lack of users. Of course, they had long switched to the internet. And we also met Eduardo Cax uh, that year, so who really, really triggered the project. From 1985 to 1986, the Brazilian artist Eduardo Cax created a series of telematic poems. I use the word telematic, it means with Minitel hardware, video text software, and tele Teletel um, network. So they consist of a corpus of primitive animations made for Minitel and were composed of four animated poems in the Alpha Mosaic video text format. were visible online on public Minitel terminal, like the one you are seeing right now on the slide. The animation composed from the choreography of geographic shapes that constitutes letters and words in eight default colors of the Minitel appeared in a left to right scan typical of the Minitel grid display. You will see it in a video later. So the Brazilian Minitel video texto terminals, uh, like this one, have disappeared. And in France, the Minitel became a dead technical medium in, on June 13th, 2012. The date of the definitive closure of services and the shutdown of servers in France. So you have to imagine that with this shutdown, all the French telematic artistic creation has disappeared in one day. The machines themselves, so those plastic shell, uh, especially, especially those in black and white, are still av widely available on the second end market because uh, this, the Minitel, uh, was distributed free of charge to all French citizens by the government. So they, they, they are still widely available, but they remain completely useless because, you know, in the absence of data sent from the server in video text format, they are just terminals. So they, they are just a screen and a keyboard. The only remaining traces of CAC poems are slides from 1986 uh, from the Brazil High Tech Exhibition and a video animation in QuickTime format pr produced by Eduardo CAC um, with graphic design software for exhibition and archive purposes. So this QuickTime animation remains a good basis for work, despite some inconstancies. For example, the display from top to bottom and not by scanning from top to bottom and from left to right. There were also um, non-existent colors of the Minitel and also impossible characters angles. Um, it is therefore a reinterpretation that is not very convincing, but essential for us to get an idea of these animations. Also, the narration of the artist himself accompanies these traces and are, of, us, of course, of a great help for us um, to have a relevant interpretation of this video. 
So panel's objective was to restore the experience of the animation on a Minitel terminal with all the characteristics and aesthetic constraints that this implies. So this media, media archaeological reconstruction approached the work according to its own layers of materiality. From the first layers, so the image and uh, the physical interface of the, interfa of the terminal, to the last low-level languages on the one hand here, um, hexadecimal, a language that can be understood both by human and machines, and sound on the other end, uh, the vector of communication between the metal and the server. So for this restoration, we needed a color minitel, extremely rare. So the one you see here on the, on the slide is a color minitel. This one was really rare because only the black and white minitel were distributed free of charge to the citizens. To have a, a, a color minitel, you had to buy it. And usually it was only uh, companies that were having those kind of minitels. But we found one like on a uh, second end market, which was uh, really fortunate. Then we needed a video text programming um, console. So this kind of big keyboard, unfortunately, they have almost disappeared. We just found, found one right now on the second end market. But at the time of the reconstruction, we didn't have any. And to finish, we need a network which is down since 2012. So we had one Minitel caller, no programming console, no network. But we considered that the situation was not hopeless. So we started, uh, so we had two stages into this reconstruction. First, the reconstruction of the artwork's code. And secondly, the reconstruction of the network. So all Minitel devices are equipped with a serial port DIN. This five pin DIN port made it possible to communicate directly with the Minitel through a serial connection without needing any modulation. Thanks to the STEM manual, which is the technical specifications of Minitel use, so the standard reference manual for uh, Minitel systems, we were able to understand how the Minitel processed data. Then we were able to create an interface between the machine and our contemporary systems to provide data for the Minitel to process. So we were able to use the Minitel technology directly without compromising the Minitel's initial treatment of data by building an interface with Arduino uh, electronic uh, prototyping board using processing environment and creating, of course, the bespoke connecting cable. Communication then occurred through a serial connection with the technical characteristic imposed by the Minitel itself. So we really didn't change the way the Minitel is processing the data. So here you can see the, the screen with um, the communication happening between the Minitel and the, the contemporary computer. Then once we could communicate with the Minitel, we decided to reconstitute the poems almost manually. So here you can see me uh, really drawing the, the, the different uh, part of the poem on the paper. So because without the programming console, we had to place ourselves at the bit level. So the lowest level in the materiality of digital programming. We therefore edited the video frames with an hexadecimal editor. This meant to translate, so translating the animations into hexadecimal code in order to transmit them to the Minitel with grids and encoding tables and recreating what was supposed to be the original frame, character by character, byte by byte, according to a manual transcription of the images on a grid. To do this, certain international standardized character sets or encoding tables exist, including the essentially alphanumeric G0 set and the G1 set known also as semigraphic. So switching from one to uh, one set to another was done thanks to code uh, specific to the Minitel. 
With these uh, sets, character type and color could be defined. Also, a uh, code that could control erasing the screen, blinking characters, or just placing the cursor on the screen. Now I'm going to show you, uh, we filmed the screen of the Minitel, and I'm going to show you an example of the video text poems by Eduardo Cac on Minitel. So here you really can see the, the, the scanning effect from left to right and bottom, uh, top to bottom. So you can see here that it's really slow animations. Um, and since the possibilities related to the creation of video text image were relatively limited and constraints were really high, it seems probable that our recreated frames are similar to the original. Since a byte could only contain one character, we were able to measure how machinic constraints became aesthetic constraints since those material constraints directly influenced the, <clears throat> the form of the image. So once the frames were edited, the Arduino program uh, displayed all of the animation that composed the video text poems. Um, in, in order to match the Brazilian experience as closely as possible, we uh, chose not to have the animation scrolling continuously, but we created a home page so that users could choose the animation they wanted to look at by um, interacting through the Minitel keyboard, um, thereby perhaps recreating something of the sensations felt by the original users um, at the time of creation. So at this stage, restoration was still uh, incomplete, okay? As we get down further into the layers of its, uh, of its materiality, um, we got hold of enough key information to recreate a Minitel server. So the crucial missing link of this network-based artwork, okay? So this is uh, at this point that we discovered that the Minitel was able to hear. Okay, data sent to the Minitel by the server is sound, or to be more precise, frequencies. One frequency for zero and one frequency for one. The Minitel hears the sound, decodes it in video text and displays the images. The servers can therefore be considered as a sound image converter and the telephone line as a vector for the sound. PAML therefore launched the second phase of this uh, project by creating a local single channel Minitel server, which used the telephone line, as it was the case for CAX animation. So when the end of the Minitel was announced in 2012, it didn't take in account the existence of single uh, channel microservers and the activities of Minitel hackers. One of the solutions to the problem of the missing servers was found in the overlooked and unexplored history of the French telematic world, the Minitel piracy. From the very beginning of Minitels, hackers were able to hijack the French telecom system to create their own single channel servers. These microservers could be accessed with eight digit phone numbers found in various computer journals and newspapers. They appeared as early as 1984 as a reaction against paid-for services. The, the Minitel was free of charge for people, 
but to connect to the server of the French Telecom, you had to pay, and it was um, payment per minute of consultation. So the hackers used the PSTN, which is still in place today, and uh, because it's used by the main technology for internet service provider, um, like the ADSL. So technically, it is still possible to set up such microservice today. So during the golden age of the mini Italian friends from 1985 to 1995, the architecture of microservice was based on the V23 um, compliant modem connected to a computer. Operating with a simple telephone line, the Minitel only interprets sounds at the inputs and outputs. The server must be able to generate sound and capture this sound, which is what sound cards of all our computer tablet smartphones do. So we decided to choose to create a microserver server using a sound card to simulate the, micro, the Minitel servers of the, ninth, of the 80s. Sorry. The sound cards are easy to program and can easily replace the V23 modem. So in our reconstruction, sounds enter the Minitel and its server first from the Minitel to the server. And I'm going to make you hear the sound of the frequencies. It's not really comfortable to hear, so just be prepared. So the one bit from the server to the Minitel, one bit corresponds to a 1,300 hertz frequency. The zero bytes with a 2,100 hertz frequency. Then from the Minitel to the server, so when people are typing in things, it has to go back to the server. One bit corresponds to 390 hertz. And a zero bit with 450 hertz frequency. So a phone interface is needed to manage the telephone calls and has such automatic dial and hanging up is possible. So this is the sound you hear when you try to call the server with your phone. So the interface is controlled by a dedicated Arduino board and this interface also had to a uh, duplexer uh, that could within a sound card separate uploaded data from downloaded data on the telephone line. So from the server to the Minitel and from the Minitel to the server. Where is my mouse? So there's two steps um, were exhibited in 2014 uh, in Aix-en-Provence to the exhibition Second Nature, uh, Une Archaeologie des Médias in Second Nature um, Gallery. And we also exhibited in Paris in Palais de Tokyo for the exhibition Vision in 2015. So after this successful reconstruction of the video text poems from Eduardo Cax, we began the reconstruction of a tele telematic novel called L'Objet Perdu. In 1982, Jean-René Bader, Jacques Elichabert, Jean-Paul Martin, and Camille Philibert founded the experimental magazine Toi et moi pour toujours. Under this label, they published three telematic novels, novels Asco, Vertige, and L'Objet Perdu. L'Objet Perdu was uh, presented in, uh, in the exhibition Les Immateriaux at the Centre Pompidou in 1985. It is a multiple choice telematic novel. It consists of just over 250 screens. This novel, this novel allows visitors to the exhibition to navigate through the story of Olga and Maxim through multiple choices. So each screen has up to two to three choices represented by the key one, two, three, or next, with which the visitor types on the Minitel keyboard to choose the next screen and thus the next episode of the story. At the end, each story is compiled and editable so that the author can complete it with new ideas 
that do not appear on the preset screens. At the beginning of uh, 2018, we found the trace of Jacques-Élie Chabert and Camille Philibert, who will then provide us with the printed version of the ASCO magazine, which can only be consulted on paper format, as well as a series of cell screen of all the screen of the Objet Perdu magazine. So during a one week workshop in April 2018, with the help of the two artists, we found from the silkscreen prints and their memories, a large part of the complex tree structure of this novel. So displayed first on the wall of our uh, lab and then transcribed into a, into a mind map, this, free st this tree structure guided the appearance of different screens, allows us to consider a partial reconstruction of the novel on the miniton. Unfortunately, we quickly realized that the silk screen are whismical. They are very far from resembling the Minitel screens. The color are absolutely not coherent with the display on the screen. The delimitation also are not compatible with the grid display. We also learned uh, that most of the screens were in fact animated. And this animation, on which we had only one sequence on the screen print, are completely impossible to reconstruct. But it was without counting on a happy finding. So here you're going to see next a YouTube video where we found at 19 minutes, Jacques Elichabert appears, presenting L'Objet Perdu as one example among other use of the Minitalk. So we can see the programming interface used by the artists and especially the animated screen of L'Objet Perdu. This video was really the core point where we could really reconstruct free screens with the animations and give us also an idea of the type of, a type of animation we had to do. So I'm just gonna let you watch it, this video. Mais on peut aussi imaginer d'autres utilisations de l'appareil. C'est euh, Vénus, l'apparition de Vénus. Et ça, c'est tiré de quoi Alors ça, c'est un, un des écrans de, de l'objet perdu, qui est un, un roman qu'on qu fabrique pour euh, une exposition à Boubou. Comment vous est venue l'idée d'écrire un roman télématique euh, On avait simplement envie de faire une, une simulation, voir si c'était possible de... De, de, en fait de, de dévier un peu du, de l'utilisation du Minitel euh, ordinaire, bon, c'est-à-dire les, les, les banques de données, tout ça, les choses assez, assez linéaires, pour, euh, pour euh, raconter des histoires. Enfin, on était très excités par aller de faire des trucs sur, sur écran, simplement. Euh, bon, enfin, on n'avait pas de, de, une idée derrière la tête concernant la diffusion, puisque il y a trois ans, en fait, c'était assez difficile d'imaginer qu'on pourrait diffuser un truc sur, sur le Minitel. Graphiquement parlant, c'est toujours très, euh, très schématique, des dessins schématiques, très euh, primitifs. Vos images sont en couleur oui, oui, toutes les images sont en couleur. C'est euh, aussi un... Enfin, on peut lister tous les inconvénients du Minitel. Euh, c'est vrai, bon, il n'est pas en couleur, il, est, le, il a une lenteur d'affichage dramatique. So, future workshops allows us to reconstruct other screens from this video archive and also from the artist's memories. Um, so here you can see the Venus that you can see at the beginning of the video, uh, the retranscription on paper. <clears throat> I was also writing the hexadecimal code under <laughs> the image on paper. Um, and then I was uh, coding it directly for the Minitel. So you can see the reconstruction on Minitel on the bottom right. So this reconstruction is totally unconventional. Uh, it was really guided by the anarchist spirit of Camille and Jack Ely and not, they were not really interested into the accuracy of the reconstruction, but rather into its um, 
artistic productivity. I'm going to show you um, in video of the animation uh, that we reconstructed on the Minitel, directly on the color Minitel, so you can have an idea of the animation and the rest of it. And here the animations that couldn't appear on the sales screens, of course. So there's, there's reconstructions are not intended to maintain a work with obstinacy, okay, but to give it an afterlife. If the, if the media archaeological reconstruction of uh, video text poems or l'objet perdu contains simulated elements, okay, the microserver, for example, they are not, uh, they are never hidden into our exhibitions. In fact, there's reconstruction purpose uh, to see not only a work, but also and above all an archive, perhaps not a completely living archive, but a, a afterlife archive, which aims to make accessible in the most accurate way possible what the life of the work was like. And to share, there's um, archives with the public. The collective activate in 2019 a new Minitel network, the WePitel. This network enables telematic services to be hosted and broadcast again on a global scale. To access it, you need a Minitel device with a DIN socket. And thanks to a simple box provided by PAMAL, anyone can connect to the WePitel network. At the same time, we are offering our first service, an archive of old and recent telematic works of art called 3615 Love, 3615 Love. 3615 was the code you had to enter to access the services at that time. Uh, so for example, for the train, 3615 train or something like this. It is the first reconstruction of a telematic exhibition. So Wipitel is a hardware software package created and developed by us, PAMAL, offering the possibility of completely rebuilding a Minitel service in a processing and Arduino environment. To recover the notion of network, we used two techniques. Wi-Fi getaway connected to the Minitel by a serial port, Wipitel 1, and Wi-Fi getaways connected to the Minitel by sound, Wipitel 2. So several Minitels can thus be on a network, connected to a central server. This server has been programmed and structured to display video pages between which a navigation defined by key combination is possible. It, so this is the, um, the server you can see on the, uh, on the, on the Raspberry uh, screen and the Minitel connected. A tree structure is programmed using a current format, JSON. The telematic pages are in video text format, VDT. And the navigation between the image, uh, the Minitel pages is um, done directly on the device thanks to the keyboard. We were able to exhibit the spaces in Cerezy in 2018 and at the Cookie Party uh, in Paris in 2019. So, PAMAL promotes the necessity of restoring works by conserving their writing, which means keeping the writing machine with which it was written and with which it is meant to be read. By restoring the work, the preser we preserve languages, technical know-how and uses, which are not lost anymore. We do not write with an Apple II as we do with a MacBook. We do not connect to the network with a Minitel like with a smartphone. Not losing this knowledge allows us to pass it on and enrich the technological possibilities of the future. Nothing says that history is linear. Nothing says that technologies are not resurgent in another form. 
nothing says that the Minitel is not the future of the internet. Thank you very much.